Good evening. We are in Council Chambers. We, chambers, excuse me. We are resuming a uh, meeting which was started last night. Council, I'll be looking for um, a motion to uh, to resume. Uh, and right after that, I would like someone to put forward a uh, motion to waive procedural bylaw so we can open up the floor to see if there's any uh, comments from members of the public here. So, a motion to resume, please. Councillor uh, Maracas and Peary, all in favor? Contrary, that's carried. Councillor Kim, would you care to move pre waiver procedural bylaw so we'll open up the floor? Thank you. Councillor Tom, second? All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. So, if anybody uh, in the audience would, would care to uh, come forward to the microphone, and uh, we'd certainly appreciate your input. Come on, I went to all this trouble. <laughs> No? Okay, then we will move on. Thank you. Uh, Council, we will move to item uh, 5, I'm sorry, what was that, 5A? That is page 649 in your binder, and that is the CAO administration budget. And I will ask Mr. Nader Rosny to give us a quick run through, then we'll put the motion on the floor. Mr. Nader Rosny. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, with the uh, reorganization, this is now officially the very, very smallest department, so this won't take very long at all. Uh, I'm on page 649. Um, and uh, if you skip all the way to 651, you see that uh, the office of the CEO now comprises uh, two uh, staff, uh, Kelly, who runs the place, and myself as her major support person, and the communication section still reports to uh, the office of the CAO. So there's uh, six people total, providing uh, the overall uh, executive leadership of the organization uh, with the ELT and um, and the communications function as well, corporately. Looking uh, through the budget, I'll slip. I'll go right to page um, 655 and explain the differences in the budget year over year. Um, there is the uh, additional communications person. This was um, explained earlier where there's been a contract person in that role for the, approximately the last four years. And so this budget seeks to make that a, uh, a permanent role. Um, there's some increased consulting services for some leadership training and things that we have on the uh, drawing board for her leadership uh, coaching that we have on the drawing board for 2017. And uh, as was presented by the manager of communications, there's a number of tools that we hope to use in the communications area to assist with our uh, social media and our general reach into the community. And so you see some added expenses there. The other uh, final one is just the uh, COLA and step increases with, uh, within the, those six staff. Um, since the uh, communications uh, section um, gave such a lengthy review just before the budget process. I won't uh, go into any more details about the plans for communications, but uh, certainly either myself or uh, Stephanie are prepared to answer any questions you might have. Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Someone put the motion on the floor, please. Mm -hmm. Councillor Thompson, thank you. Councillor Kim, second. Comments or questions for Mr. Nader Rosny with respect to his budget or Stephanie. Councillor Thompson. Thank you. Uh, through you, I'll start with Mr. Nader Rosny. And and perhaps you've explained it in the past, and if you don't mind just refreshing it, but when, when we talk about the, uh, the staffing position, we talk about it's a conversion from a contract position to a full-time position. And I guess I'm just trying to understand why that's, a, I guess, a, an increase on the tax levy of $109,000 as per our sheet, when I would assume that it's a funded position year over year. So the money for this person in a contract position has been being paid somewhere. So why is it such a substantive increase to go from contract to full-time? Mr. Nader Rasney. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, there's been a number of mechanisms uh, that I've discovered were used to fund that position. Uh, some of it, quite frankly, was just falling to the bottom line. There was years when there, there was a known to be an operating surplus. Uh, there was a need for the communications, and so uh, the person was left in the role recognizing that they would run over budget. Uh, other years, there was um, a large component of the work that was done uh, related to accessibility uh, ch changes, and so it was funded by the accessibility program. Uh, that was a portion of that salary. I think it was as much as half or I think maybe even 80% at one point, and then it decreased over time. But So there was a, a, a number of different mechanisms that were used to fund the position over the years. 
and uh, it's no longer appropriate to use the accessibility funding. Most of that work is done on our web page now. We're compliant, and so that isn't appropriate to draw from, from that reserve. And with all of the right sizing and things that we're doing, we're not prepared to just let things fall to the bottom line. As well, we'd like to solidify the position and, and get it integrated into the team as opposed to a, a six-month sort of rotational uh, position. Yes, sir? Thanks. Um, you know, I, I appreciate the explanation. I, I don't know if I'm very supportive of the explanation that some, some creative ways were used to fund it as opposed to it showing up under personnel costs in years past, but I appreciate the right sizing of it. Um, my only other comment, and I, I make it every year, is that, you know, uh, our, our budget now for corporate communications is, is upwards of $700,000, and, and, you know, I think it's important for us as uh, uh, presented by our manager in, in the past uh, in terms of a strategy and as well as identifying metrics to show that uh, the money is being well spent. And so I look forward, uh, as that continues to be developed, to show that the $700,000 we continue to invest in corporate communications is well invested. Thank you. Councilor Gardner. Um, just to follow up on that, to be clear, is this, are we hiring a new person for this position? You, Mr. Chair, yes, we would post a new position, uh, specifically in the context of the new changes we've made in the department and the and the goals that we have. Uh, so we'll have a, sp a specific position for it. Thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Abel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> and. Uh, it's basically a comment on, on the communications. We have a, a major challenge uh, engaging our community. Uh, we've seen it uh, last term in this term <coughs> when we put ads out for planning. We, we, ha we have always used the same way of communicating and engaging, and that's through online services and um, advertising, posting ads. And so I'm hoping that we can try and look at some practices. I'm looking at municipal world here and uh, the smart city, long in Quebec, they have a really innovative way of engaging with great results. So I, I would just sort of pass that on to um, your department, Stephanie's as well, as a, a new innovative way, very engaging, great responses. Uh, I just read it, you know, in our copy this week. So I'm it's one of the challenges we posted. I'm, I'm bringing it just to your awareness, uh, just as something, as a comment. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else? Okay, it's calling the vote. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item uh, 5B, which was in our package from last night. Um, someone would just put that on the floor, please, and discuss it. It's a memo from uh, the CAO to receive for information. Councillor Marakis, thank you. Second, please. Councillor Humphreys. Speakers to the item, please. Councillor Marakis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Nadarazi and I have had some quite lengthy discussions in regards to training and development. Um, I have to, I, I will apologize to uh, our CAO as I, this is the one question I did not ask, so I'm going to put him on the spot right now. And, and that is, uh, and that's my fault that I didn't ask this uh, and get this information earlier. But uh, what is the uh, mandatory amount for training and development? Mr. Nader, uh, Through you, Mr. Chair, I do not have that number. Okay. And, and, and I appreciate that, but if it, maybe if someone can get that to me at some point, and I would really appreciate that. Um, you know, I was looking through this, and I see that we're we're looking to up the training and development, uh, pretty much doubling from what we what we had it at the last two years. And um, you know, I'm I, I don't think I'm comfortable with doing that just yet, due to the fact that we asked for certain policies to be put in place. Uh, we wanted uh, to look at uh, a clawback clause. We wanted to look at uh, how that knowledge transfer happens and occurs. And uh, so we wanted all those things, uh, that structure put in place before we look at moving forward and how we would be moving forward. So we'd be comfortable as a group in, in having those numbers 
go up from what they were. And so uh, at this point, I'm still not comfortable in, in basically doubling the budget for at this time. Um, for myself personally, I, I believe that uh, I would like to see the number reduced and I see that there's more value for our residents and for our taxpayers if we use some of those funds for some of the other things that we're, we're looking to accomplish because I think there is more value. Um, so I don't know what that number is right now. Um, I, I kind of have a number in my head. I wouldn't mind hearing maybe from some others but and, and what the thoughts are. Um, but I wouldn't mind taking a portion or a number and, and sw switching it over to the option side and we can look at it as a whole as we go through that option uh, portion. And I don't know if you, if you want me to throw out that number right now. I can do that and make it an amendment. Um, if you'd make an amendment, please. Sure. Uh, I'd say uh, 70000 move over to the option side. What's, what's the total, Mr. Nader, right now? The, the increase is 107 from what it was, and so I'm saying is, is move over 70 and increase it just by 37. What's the total, though? Mr. Elliott, do you have that number? Total? I suppose we should get a seconder first. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a seconder? Thank you, Councilor Harvey's. Mr. Elliott. What's, we're just looking for what the total number would be. The, uh, the budget without the uh, water rate funded uh, activities, but including the building services fees, is 221. Take out building, you're about 211. So that's the total? 211 on the tax rate, yes. Thank you. So, Councillor Maracas, if I understand, so you, you'd be reducing the 211 by $70,000 or, or moving 70000 into the options side. Councillor Humphreys? Yeah. Okay, speakers to Councillor Maracas' amendment, please. Councillor Peary? Councillor Humphreys, Councillor Tom? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, through you to Mr. Natarozny, uh, following along uh, Councillor Maracas' um, thought process, and about putting the policies in place. Um, when do you anticipate those policies being in place? There we go. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, we have prioritized that work and we expect to have it uh, in the first quarter of uh, the new year. So, because of the, the um, I'm not quite the turnaround of, of that, um, I'm, I'm okay with moving it to, to the option phase, but I'm, I'm even thinking of um, maybe even beyond that, just moving it to, you know, moving it for consideration when those items come before us. Um, but for now, uh, I'll move it to the options phase and, and we'll go from there. I want to make sure that the vote we're, the amendment to, that we're voting on is just to move this to the options at this point. So we're going to discuss it again. I know that that's fair. We're going to discuss it during the options, so there's no further, not lots of discussions on this time. I want to make sure all the rules is tight. Councillor Abel, I'm just having a problem following the process. So we have an amendment on the floor. Yes. And are, is is are we referring it to the options? Yes. Okay. Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Mayor Dahl. Uh, perhaps a little bit more of an explanation. You know, I'm, I'm looking at the training and development summary, and it says that our actuals in 2015, including water and building, was, was $156,000 was the spend. Uh, obviously, in, in 2016, that was, that was reduced uh, through the direction of Council, but the budget was, again, around $150,000, including building and, and water. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering why the proposed 2000 budget including building and water was $256,000, essentially a $100,000 increase over the year-over-year -year budget amounts from the last few years. Is there any particular reason for that? 
Mr. Mayor Ross. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, so there's a couple of uh, key items that were added this year. Uh, one was uh, anticipation of the changeover to uh, the new Windows platform and the new uh, Office platform. There was a dedicated amount of 25000 uh, for that training. Uh, we're also falling behind in our um, technical training for our IT staff, uh, and we've been severely underfunded in that area, so there's an extra allowance of uh, 21000 I believe, for... Uh, 14, 14,000 or uh, for uh, yeah, seven times two um, for those staff. In other areas, uh, the training amount has gone up, but uh, and I don't have this broken down, but in other areas, the training amount has gone up, but there's been within the department uh, a reallocation of existing funding, recognizing that we are behind in some areas for our training. And so some of it isn't actually a pure increase to the to the dollars that were, that, um, that we're asking for it. It's been a reallocation from other expense items within the department. Uh, the other area where we're significantly behind and in in, in, in the roads and a water group has a, um, a comprehensive training plan now to come up to speed with our requirements under health and safety. Um, uh, there's a lot of training that we're quite frankly behind on and so there's a, um, a fairly complex uh, plan there that actually if we were to do it all, it wouldn't even be included in that budget. So we were doing it a step at a time. But those are the main components of the increases. Yes. Thank you. And you know, similar to the conversation last year, it really was there was some concern around the um, the the value to the residents and, and to the organization as well uh, of the amount of dollars being spent on training because there was a perception that in some cases, you know, it, it, it was being used to to elevate person's skills making them more marketable and then we'd lose them and and then you know there would be no end value to the organization and so that's where some of the concerns were coming so I'm glad to hear that um, there are some policies in the works with regards to it it's my understanding that these policies you know are fairly standard in, in some other municipal organizations in terms of payback and so forth and so um, you know I'd be more comfortable you know um, catching up on training once those policies are in place so uh, I'll be supporting the motion for now. Any other speakers? Councillor Abel. I thought we were referring, but if we're speaking to the motion, I'll... Well, we're actually we're, we're speaking to the amendment, which is deferred to uh, options. We're taking seven thousand. Well, Sorry? you know, 70, yes, we're referring 70,000 to, thank you, to the options. Well, I'm not in favor um, of cutting back on uh, training and development. I think one of our, and I said this before, uh, there's, there's tremendous value in investing in your staff. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it back because um, Councillor Thompson did go in a bit long. I appreciate that. So he's that, allowed to and I'm not? That's correct. Okay, thank you. We'll, we'll discuss it in the options. And just calling the, the vote then on Councillor Marakis's amendment to refer 70,000 of the training budget to options. All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Back to the main motion then on uh, the training. Well, I, I guess we'll move that as amended. No, Councillor Thompson. I'll just speak to it. I just have one comment, and, I, and I, it's actually just for the CAO's consideration is that uh, there are, you know, in addition to courses, we often see conferences and, and so forth advertised, and I, I think there's tremendous value in some of these conferences. Uh, not just FCM and AMO, but some of the local ones that organizations put on. I know uh, recently, I forget the name of it, but the, the planner for the City of Toronto was speaking and talking about public spaces and open spaces, and I, and I think there's some value in that. And uh, I know that um, staff don't always have opportunities, or perhaps it's not high on the priority list to go to it, but I, I just think there's some value. And, and as we're re-looking at our policies, I'd like the CAO to give some consideration to some of those local conferences, because I think there is value there as well. Um, in addition to, you know, prescribed courses. Councillor Abel, to the main motion. <clears throat> I can speak to it now. Main motion, yeah. Um, so, motion. As, as I was saying, uh, I was uh, not in favor, to, I think it was to last year or the year before, um, on cutting back on training and development. I think it's one of the best investments we can make. I got a lot of feedback from uh, residents saying they didn't uh, go along with that, that idea, that they thought it was not in the best interest of the residents, of the taxpayers, to curtail and cut uh, training and development. 
uh, they do believe in, in getting uh, the most for their, their dollar, but certainly not in your staff. And uh, we have had a turnover. We, we, uh, we lost our CAO. Uh, we've lost some key players uh, at senior management. Um, Mr. Curtis comes to mind. We lost Luigi uh, Coangelo, so really senior staff. So we need to train in succession, and that's part of training and development, along with the innovative ideas. One idea by one employee can save hundreds of thousands of dollars, which is what you want to do for your employees. You want to engage them, enrich them, uh, enable them, and, uh, and training and development through any and every uh, vocation is one of the best ways to do it. So I'm all for taking um, measures to limit um, spending and, and getting value, but certainly not with our staff and training and development. Our CAO has walked in. Um, I think it's, it's, it's prudent that we uh, take his advice. That's why we hired him. And if he comes in right away and sees this as a, a recommendation that he is bringing forward to us right off the bat, I'm all for supporting him in, in that recommendation. So uh, I'm glad to see this, actually. And I'm fully supportive because I appreciate the value. And it echoes through all municipalities. <coughs> and, and every organization invest in their employees to attract the very best and to retain them. And then succession and then all the innovative ideas at training and efficiencies that they bring to your organization. So um, those are my comments, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Peary, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And just uh, for clarity, I know that we've just um, pushed off $70,000 for a future discussion. What's the remaining amount that we've all agreed that we're going to move forward on for sure tonight? About 140? Mr. Elliott, can you give us a number? Instead of us all guessing, coming up with nine different numbers. This is uh, 211714 plus the amount uh, that, sorry, that's the, uh, that's the amount before the 70,000 reduction. So you're at uh, 130, uh, sorry, 141,714 plus the increase that council gave itself for its conferences. Set. Okay, do, do I not still have the, the floor? So one, just to confirm through you again, the answer <coughs> to my question is 141,000 plus the additional fees that, that council has given themselves. Yeah. And what was it last year? Mr. Elliott? On the comparable basis, about 105,000. So this is an increase then of about 40,000 or 36,000 over last year. That's what I'm seeing. So I just want to make sure everyone's aware that we're not actually cutting from the budget. We are adding close to 40,000 to the budget as it stands right now. Uh, that number might go up more, or it might stay the same. But I want to make sure everybody around the table knows that we're not reducing the budget, we are adding to it as things stand right now. I don't want to get, let facts get in the way of our debate, but I think it's important that we remember what they are. Councillor Tom. I was going to ask the same question of staff, so Councillor Perry cleared it up. Thank you. Councillor Mark, a second time. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, uh, Councillor Perry, for uh, bringing that to everyone's attention, because I agree, we're not cutting. We're we're actually increasing the budget and so I appreciate that um, you know speaking about um, efficiencies and, and I think that's at the end of the day that's that's what we're looking for is, is how to be more efficient with the dollars that we spend within the training and development I don't think anyone sitting at this table doesn't want to see our our staff being trained and developed to the best of their abilities but then again we also look to hire the best of the best and so when they come here they should be the best and so I'm not saying that doesn't mean that we don't train them or we don't develop them even further. 
right? But it's to look for those efficiencies. As Councillor Thompson mentioned, there's a lot of other programs, you know, do we, do we, bring, do we bring someone in to teach a, a bigger group or do we send people out? So there's those kind of things that we can look at that we can save some money in, in this regard. And then, you know, and I, I'm also looking at, you know, we can look at other municipalities that I'm looking at the graph. And, you know, and we are at the low end. And uh, last year we were the lowest, but only by 0.02%, uh, where Vaughan is at 0.63%. Uh, uh, and we're at 0.61. And everyone else is much higher. So then the question begs, is, is everyone else doing it right? And Vaughn and us are doing it wrong? So is Vaughn doing it wrong? Is Vaughn not training and developing their staff properly? Or are they doing it right? And maybe everyone else is doing it wrong and spending too much. Right? So, you know, I think if you're saying that we're doing it wrong, well, then in essence, you're saying that Vaughn's doing it wrong. And, and quite honestly, I don't think that Vaughn is doing it wrong. I, I, I hear a lot of things from Vaughn, and I think that, that they train and develop their staff very well. And so how can they do it at that level and at that price? And we can't. And so that goes to my point is I think we need to be more efficient in, in how we spend our money. Councillor Kim. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was thinking along the same lines as Councillor Marrakis in that, in that chart that we, saw, that we see. Even though we're on the, the left side of the graph, actually, I think we're, we might be an industry leader in that regard. And uh, I think, I think uh, you know, when you look at those other communities, whether it be Vaughn or East Willenberry, I, I didn't see their names higher than ours, I don't believe, in the, uh, the best places to live in, in the category. So we're doing something right. And in the end, you know, I think um, Mr. Nadrasny has done a great job since he, since he came on board, and I have no doubt, and I, and I have full trust that this is the need that he believes uh, is necessary for, for our staff to um, get to their full potential, and that's what we've been talking about the last couple of months, is whether it be our cultural partners or internal staff or other organizations, is let's try to see what that full potential is. Um, but I think from all the options that we've seen and all the new asks that we've seen the last couple of weeks, you know, uh, clearly we're not going to get the numbers that we want, our end numbers. And we can't say yes to everybody. Uh, and that includes the training budget as well. So uh, I'm in support of the, uh, the motion to uh, it leave it as is or is it to cut? Is that the main motion now? I forget. But uh, uh, I'm, in, I'm in favor of... Uh, 141,000 for those reasons. Thank you, Councillor Kim. Any other speakers, please? On the motion is amended. That's, my only comment is that percentages can be a little misleading because the Vaughan salary budget is substantially larger than ours, whereas East Willenberry's budget is probably substantially less than ours. So I think you have to combine that also with the salaries because I suspect that Vaughan can get different efficiencies in how they spend their money than we would simply because they're much larger and have greater staff and probably have trained the trainer programs and things like that. So. Calling in the vote then, all the favor of receiving the, uh, well, the motion is amended, which is to receive with that one amendment. Opposed? That is carried, thank you very much. We'll move to 5C, which is the vacancy control board report, excuse me. We're receiving that for information. Someone put that on the floor, please. Mm -hmm. Councillor Maracas, thank you. Councillor Tom, speakers, Councillor Maracas. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to say it's uh, great to get this report, and I, I, I'm looking forward to future reports. On a, uh, and I, I don't mind if they're on a yearly basis. I, I know that it, it mentions uh, on a bi-yearly, uh, bi but semi-annual. Uh, but, um, you know, I think it's fine if we get it annually uh, just before budget so we can take a look at what's, what's happened and what's gone on throughout the whole year. But I think it's, it's great uh, information. I think it's great, also great value to go through... Uh, uh, through and have this program set up and and I just maybe uh, our CAO can maybe mention on how it's how it's worked uh, throughout his time being here so far and and his um, knowledge on how it's Mr. happened. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, through you Mr. Chair. Um, <clears throat> just two quick comments before I uh, answer the question. One, um, the actual, uh, when, in looking up this uh, because quite frankly we had uh, 
it wasn't drawn to my attention that this was an outstanding uh, item until uh, the questions came up. And in following up, it actually, uh, the direction of council was to do this um, biannually, which is every two years. But I th we, th we think what council meant was probably semi-annually, even though all of the research shows that it was biannual. So technically, we're not even late at this point. We're just right on time, I think. Every but we will move, if annual is fine or semi-annual, we have no problem doing that, and we'll, and we'll get it on the record properly. The other thing I should note is on the overview, there's a typo in the first line between September 2015 and the end of October 2016. So just to make that clear. Um, we did... Um, the forms have been helpful for me. It's uh, uh, when the uh, when I sign off on the on the new hires, I get a bit of a, a, a blurb on uh, the role the person plays, and uh, and in most cases why the why the recommendation is to uh, to, to proceed with a posting of the position. Uh, we did discover as the report. If you add the numbers up, you'll see there's I think four that uh, that got by without a form. So we're going to tighten up that process and make sure that that doesn't happen um, in the future. But uh, overall, it's uh, worked well. It's drawn them to my attention. And uh, in more than one occasion, I've paused on them to, uh, to ask some questions and to learn more about the role. So it is, it's, uh, I can assure you that it's not something that is just uh, rubber stamped and, uh, and, and pushed on to the next bin. So it's uh, worked well for us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. CEO, on, on that. And I, I think this is part of that aspect that, that shows, shows a bit of value and also uh, allows us to be more efficient moving forward in, in, in our positions and in our staffing. And so, you know, thank you again for, uh, for, for the work, and I'm, I'm glad to see that, that we've put this policy in place moving forward. Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Mayor. Through you to Mr. Natarazny, just to confirm that it says that between, as you amended, September 2016 and October, September 2015 and October 2016, we had 29 permanent full-time positions vacated. Correct. So I, I guess, you know, I, I know that one of the KPIs is employee turnover, and our target is 5 or 6 percent a year. So 29 out of our 200 employees is, you know, a significantly number. Is, is there any particular reason why we had such a high turnover during that 13-month span? Mr. Through you, Mr. Chair, um, I'd want to go through them all and give a, a more precise answer, but I can tell you that in, certainly in some of the roles, uh, uh, as a newcomer to the area, I'm amazed at how competitive uh, the environment is. It's, it's, quite frankly, this is just the land of opportunity, and people can drive uh, a sh fairly short distance and move into the next role in their career. And um, sometimes that's with a, a, a smaller organization, but a more... Uh, uh, senior role, and sometimes it's uh, sort of a similar role, but in a larger organization that exposes them to a more complex environment is another good um, uh, stop on their career path. So a lot of it is that. Uh, there's been a few that uh, we have uh, um, uh, managed uh, uh, out, out of our employ that uh, hasn't worked out well, so there's a few in that category. And uh, the rest is, I would say, just some, some general churn. But there's a high levels, especially in the, uh, in the management roles of uh, people that are uh, seeking other opportunities. Two things then. One, is our target of 5 or 6% a year realistic if it's such a competitive environment? And I think also that goes back to the whole question about training and development. You know, if there is such a high turnover in staff, then it makes an argument on both sides about the need to have the, those clawback policies and procedures in place because chances are you may invest in that employee but they may be gone in a year. And so then there's not necessarily a payback to the organization, it's an advancement for the individual. And so again, it speaks to the need to have those policies in place. Any other speakers? Councillor Abel? Well, I'll just make a comment that we were one of the best retained when we had the training and development. and. Uh, one of the things you do when you cut and slash, uh, you create uh, an opportunity for those to seek employment where there's opportunity. So I would say that some of that is, would coincide, coincidence perhaps, um, but obviously there's uh, where we were retaining and maintaining, uh, now it's flipped. So, um, you know, I, I think it's people see an opportunity and a place where they can be employed uh, where they can have a, an opportunity to um, advance their careers and, and learn more and, and work within the development. And, and it shows uh, in industries that um, 
loyalty is, is one of the key um, benefits of investing in your staff in training and development. So uh, that would be my comment. Councillor uh, Marcus, second time. Oh, Councillor, I'll go to Councillor Kim if I may for first time. Councillor Kim. Just to put a, uh, uh, I don't want to say it a correction, but uh, I, I think that's not exactly correct information. Uh, I, the main reason why people move uh, or choose to stay is for upward mobility, not necessarily because of training. Uh, there's very little uh, studies out there that correlate training and education with longevity in an organization. It's mostly uh, are there opportunities to advance? Um, so just want to put that out there. Councilor Marcus. If there's no other comments, receive the report for information. All in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Thank you. Five D. Um, that we're just receiving this for information. Councillor Thompson, I believe, required or requested, pardon me, some uh, added explanations. So Mr. Elliott uh, modified that. If someone would just put that on the floor, please. Councillor Thompson, thank you. Councillor Maracas, comments, questions? Councillor Thompson, anything about that? No, I just uh, I appreciate uh, staff providing us with that information, making those corrections. Any other comments? All in favor of receipt, please. Opposed? That is carried. Thank you. So we're going to move to the new for us options. Uh, I was just going to I was just going to ask, can we get an updated sheet on this? Maybe we take a well, recess and we can get an updated sheet. Thank you. I'm now going to ask Mr. Nader Rosny to explain this new and wonderful process to us. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, you have to speak slowly because staff are running around printing stuff, aren't yeah. they? No, not printing yet because yet. Um, you might want to change something. I'll have these out. These are the, these are the, this is just the um, the summary that I sent uh, today after your deliberations last night. So you may already have it, but I brought copies just in case. So this is um, with the exception of the addition. Now tonight you've added an option for uh, short one. <clears throat> tonight you've added one more option to this list. So you have at this point in time 17 options the 17th option being the reduction of uh, training uh, so now training will appear as an option to spend 70,000 more and we'll take 70,000 out of the base so uh, what this is this uh, process is supposed to be is a tool to um, avoid you having to go one by one and incrementally say yay or nay to a whole series in this case 18 different decisions 17 d different decisions it's just a tool, it's not the final uh, uh, piece by any stretch because it's it anticipated that even after you score, um, then you will still have an opportunity to move some things around. But ultimately what you're trying to do is get to that, those list of things that you agree you want to fund as part of this budget. So what will happen is, is uh, you can go through each of the options, uh, calling them sort of one at a time, and if there's any comments that want to be added at that point or suggestions, um, then council would go through that and then move to the next option. And you just run through the list quickly uh, and talk about each of, of the options. Once you've gone through them all and you've settled on what the list looks like, so you may perhaps you change your value to perhaps you add one, perhaps you split one into two, I mean, there's any, you can do anything you want. Uh, once you've done that, we will print a revised scorecard that'll have all of the items on it and you'll be uh, asked to rank them all, not sorry, not rank them, score them all from zero to 10. Zero being you have absolutely no interest in funding that option. 10 being you absolutely want to fund that option and obviously everything in between, some sense of your priority in funding that option. You could give them all 10s, you could give them all zeros. Uh, each of the options you would go through and give it a score. At the end of that, we'll collect those individual scorecards and we will tally them together <clears throat> and we will add up the scores for each of the items. So what we'll next hand out and put on the screen for your viewing will be the list in, a, in the prioritized format after you've scored them all. So if everybody gave it 
10 point, and a certain option 10 points, it would be at the top of the list with a score of 90. And if everybody gave it something zero, it would be at the very bottom of the list with a score of zero, and you should have a range of things in between. So that list will be resorted based on a priority. On the far right, then, you will also see, as you go down the list, you will see as the, as the, how the tax uh, levy would change based on where you draw your line for what you're going to fund and what you're not going to fund. So notionally, a starting point, a, a suggested starting point, would be under a 90-point scale, anything that's 40, gets 46 points after you've all scored it is kind of notionally a majority. Not that it's a hard fixed majority, but you'd, I'd suggest you might want to draw your line there first, because if it got 46 points, it got enough score from, from the nine uh, members of council to warrant at least another discussion. So I'd suggest that you would draw that line wherever 46 is, and theoretically everything above it would be funded. Now, your challenge is probably going to be that that number, if it's a higher tax rate than you're willing to see, now this is where you get into the discussion about where you want to move that line to. And it could be moving the line up a couple. It could be moving the line up a couple, but dragging one up with it. I mean, it's again, it's a tool. It's not uh, a scientific thing. It doesn't cast anything in stone. It just, in my experience, provides a better way to manage 18 different things that you're being asked to vote on. Um, when this was initiated, we were into, a, in my past uh, life, we were into lists of 20 and 30 things. And inevitably, what happens is you get through the first 10, and then the dynamic of the decision-making changes because you're running out of money. So something that you really wish you had talked about earlier because it's not going to make the day, you lose that opportunity to, to treat it in this manner. So again, it's, it's, it's just a tool to promote a, a different form of discussion about getting to, the, to a final uh, range of things that you, want to, that you want to finance at the end of the day. Is everyone thoroughly confused? No. Good. No, Councillor Kim. I was going to say this for later, but after hearing uh, uh, Mr. Nazarasny speak, I think that the efficient way might be to uh, put the line in the sand now. And you know, I think just like in the FAC, you know, we, we put down parameters in terms of how, uh, you know, uh, put together the principles of, of the budget. I think given all the options that we have, it gets pretty confusing, even though we rank them. Um, I think if we have in the back of our heads, we know where we're going to draw the line. I think that would really speed up the process and make it more expeditious. So uh, I moved to men to put that line on the sand, and I thought about this overnight and uh, today. And my li line is at three percent, three point zero. Uh, I'm open to hearing what other numbers that other councillors have put in their minds because this, this must. Uh, uh, have been something that they thought about, and the line, the number that I felt comfortable with was 3.0. Um, if everyone's in agreement with that, I'd like to move that forward. But if there's a, a different number that people have in mind, uh, I'm open to that suggestion. Um, what's the best way? Uh, uh, well, I, I, how, how do you? What's your thought then, and how you, how how would you handle the options? Okay. Well, what I propose is that. At 2.6, we're at 1.043 and change. At th to get to 3.0, I think from uh, back of the napkin calculation, I believe it was 188,000. So that's our, our budget for the options. And so we can continue on with Mr. Nadrasny's process that we rank these. But after we rank these and we, and, uh, uh, we get a better idea of where these options lie, uh, we can add that up. and. See where that 188,000, where that uh, where the demarcation is. Is that uh, is that understandable? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, I get where Councillor Kim's going, um, but maybe just this time, maybe we just follow the process that our CA always put put forward, I, and then. I mean, if we are going to do what Councillor Kim's saying, and then this should be adjusted because he's saying 188, we would need to add that $70,000. So you're actually looking at about 258 that we can add in to get the three, right? So, but I, I get what you're saying, Councillor Kim, and I mean, if everyone wants to do that, I'm fine. But I'm just saying maybe we should just do it the way CAO has suggested and just start that way. And if we, if we find it difficult, then we 
we can switch okay, around. Okay, quickly, because we, we'd like to get on with the process, Kelso Ebel. Well, I have no clue what's going on. So okay. I would, before we do anything, Fair enough. We I would like to be able to understand what we're doing, because this is important. We can get the uh, CAO to explain it once more. Councillor Gartner, did you have your hand up? Okay, sorry. Cal uh, Mr. Nader Rosny, would you uh, just walk through one more time where... So, I'm going to... Uh, Thank you, like Mr. Chair. So what is uh, now being uh, passed out is if you didn't make any changes to the option sheet, this is what we would use to score the options. So this should make it hopefully clearer. So if you if you had a discussion right now, you went through each of the 18 op 17 options, and at the end of the discussion, you agreed to leave this option list the way it is, then this would be your scorecard, if you will. We would uh, pause briefly. You would have the opportunity to give zero to 10 to each of those things individually. We would collect those scorecards and we would tally the scores and we would bring it back in one sheet. The one sheet will have each of the nine individuals listed, the, the items that you're voting on and the score you've given it, as well as the rolled up ranking. So to Councillor Kim's point, you would st still see exactly where, the, if it was 3.0, you would be able to draw a line and say, okay, everything above that line is within the 3.0, and everything below it is beyond 3.0. And again, it's, you can treat it any way you like. If you want to make it hard and fast, then, then you're done. That's, that's easy. If, in my experience, there's always a bit of discussion after you draw that line about some little thing that's down there for $5,000 that got enough points and it really doesn't move anything. Can we move it above the line? You, know, you get into those kinds of discussions. But you really have to wait and see what the ranking looks like before you can finalize that. So I don't know if that uh, helps Councillor Abel, but... Councillor Abel, does that help you? I understand the scoring now. Okay. Um, the point, we're starting at 2.6. That's, is that where we're starting at 2.6 percent? Mr. Elliott, 2.4? 2.4, so we started at 1.9 plus one for the reserve, made 2.9. We've made reductions, we're down to 2.4. If we go to Councillor uh, Kim's uh, am amendment to cut it off at three, that gives us 0.6%, and that is how much? Mr. Elliott? It's about $200,000, I think. Yeah, no, I understand. Councillor Johnson? Thank you, Mary. Am I cut off? Oh, no, I thought I'm sorry, you were finished. No, I, I wasn't. So I'm just, I'm just, so $243,000, are we just going to then, uh, Mr. CAO, through you, Mr. Mayor, should we just stop looking and, and go in our head and say, okay, I'm going to stop at 240? What if I put down more and I'm at 300 or, or 400, whatever that amount is? So uh, what happens at that point with, the, with regards to the amendment? Mr. CAO. So, um, through you, Mr. Chair, I, I don't want to uh, uh, jump to a conclusion, but I, I, with the amendment that I think Councillor uh, Kim is proposing, you were just notionally agreeing that beforehand that you're cutting it off at 3%. It really doesn't change this process because you're, you're still going to vote the same way. You're going to draw the line at 3% and then you're going to have the discussion. It's just more of a of, of setting that number now versus setting it after you after you score it. So I would propose that you wouldn't change your mindset at all about how you would score them because you'd want to see how everything lay, f fell out after the scoring. And are we talking at all to any of these items? Yeah. Afterwards? Yeah, but the, okay. the point is to, to oh, I've got, yeah, we're gonna, we're, 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 what we're trying to do is of the 17, yeah, of the 17 options, we're probably not going for all 17. So we're trying to get some, rather than doing them one by one and voting on each one and saying yay or nay, this way may speed that process up. I believe it was Councillor Perry who mentioned to our glacial pace last night. So I would think we could do this and get it done fairly quickly, at least a direction as to where we want to go. You're not precluded from adding anything or taking anything. Okay, I, I think I understand that, Mr. Mayor, but this is the first time we have been near completion of the operation 
in November. So I think we're moving at lightning speed as compared to other years. So I'm prepared to, to take a moment to understand the That's new fine. process. Councillor Thompson. And Thank sorry, you. just to be clear, just if I may, I, there is no amendment. So no, there is not. Right now, we're just prioritizing. So there is no, that 3% is just Councillor Kim's number. Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Mayor Dahl. Just, uh, I just want to confirm with uh, Mr. Elliott. Mr. Elliott, is one full percentage point 405,000, as I, I see it's on, in, in, on the screen? 405, 500. Thank you. Because uh, I think, you know, I, I agree with Councillor Kim in, in principle that I think in your own mind, everybody has a, a sense of where they feel comfortable with. And so you're trying to figure out, okay, you know, where should, where's the best place to allocate those dollars. Um, but I, I just want to, as chair of the FAC, I just want to remind everybody that we did a, approve a budget principles document. Yeah. And within those budget principles, it talked about, you know, building a budget based on inflation plus 1%. And we agreed that inflation during that 12 month period was 2.1% plus the 1% for, for um, growth in infrastructure brought it to 3.1. That's why on the sheet before, it does say the percentage target was 3.1%. That's what we tasked staff to do. And so while, while I understand everybody has a different uh, viewpoint on it, for myself, I'm comfortable with the 3.1% as the target because that's the direction we gave staff. Councilor Humphries. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And that, that was going to be my point, that my, in my mind we had established that through the FAC. and. Uh, 2.1 is our target, um, and just to go back to this method, I think I think it'll work out really well in terms of, you know, each of us can prioritize, and if we exceed the 3.1, and we're not all happy with the priorities in there, we, that's where we have the discussion and the debate to get us to 3.1. I think we're going to probably be, depending on how we all vote, well over 3.1, and then we have that, or maybe not. And then we have that discussion. So thank I you. Think that's good. So I would suggest we move forward on this in this process. And I, I totally agree. I was going to make the same point as, as Councillor Thompson and Council, Council has already agreed to 2.1 plus one. So I think we've got that number. We are obviously free to change that at any time. But I think we'll at least stick to it at this point and, and move on. So I suggest everybody, if we're all comfortable with this, just circle your number and have a good old time. Now. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Nadarazny said we were going to look through each one briefly, okay. not discuss the item, right. but because I think. Okay, so so who's going to do that, Mr. You want to lead that little process? <laughs> so, Mr. Chair, if you'd like. So, I, I guess I would just Please. propose that we would just read them off one at a time, and if there, if the uh, the option is understood, if you don't have any questions about it, and in your own mind you're ready to give it a zero or a ten, we can move to the next one, or. Uh, on the contrary, if you uh, want to uh, do something to the option or you want to ask questions to clarify what the option means, then that would be your chance and we would just move down through the list. Okay, um, thank you. Appreciate that. So first item, uh, then uh, budget option one, which is the animal control service. Is any, any question on what that represents? We're not discussing the merits of it. Is there any question, clarification, clarification question for, uh, for Ms. Van Loon? Nice English, right? Mr. Elliott. First of all, okay, hold on. Uh, Mr. Chair, it may help. Uh, we have option sheets that describe each. Yep. There are one pager, it's in tab five. Yep. May assist as we're flipping through these. Just refresh uh, members of council. And of course, we've all read them. Questions for clarification on this, okay? Just to, to Ms. Van Leeuwen on the animal control. She, she mentioned that briefly last night. Councilor Humphries. Gartner. I'm sorry. I dye my hair, I might be able to be Councilor <laughs> Getting all excited it. here. Um, Ms. Van Leeuwen, I'm, I'm very mixed about this because my feeling is that if we have the appropriate signage and we actually do manage to um, convict a couple of people of, of not following our, our bylaw, then that would be as good as having the extra animal control person, or I believe it's half. Uh, Ms. Van Loon is disagreeing with me. So I need to be convinced, and, and in any case, are there going to be or are there substantial signs in place that say, if you do this, you will be fined X amount of money? Ms. Van Loon? And, and under oh, patrol. Do the signs say that? This, this trail is under patrol? Through you, Mr. Mayor, I'm not exactly certain what the message on the signs is. Um, uh, our bylaw services staff have been working with parks. Um, they have a sign, a trail sign strategy, and so we're combining the two efforts um, for cost saving purposes. Um, the exact wording, I'm not certain. I can tell you that 
signage in place will assist without um, the visible officer attending the parks trails people will continue to walk their dogs off leash okay thank you microphone thank you any other questions on item on that one uh, budget option number two uh, is from parks and rec uh, annual multicultural event any clarification clarification goodness gracious I'm having trouble with that aren't I Mr. Any questions for Mr. Downey? We'll just leave it at questions on this particular item. Okay, thank you. Okay, oh, sorry, Abel, I apologize. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So with the multicultural annual event, you have asked, um, I, I'm all for it. I, I was just wondering if you can tell council what you plan on doing to, uh, to, to move it up with greater attendance, greater engagement. Mr. Downey? Through you, Mr. Mr. Mayor, um, the thought was that uh, if this uh, gets approved, that there will be a, a committee struck to assist in program development, and then that program will then be turned over to staff for execution. Yes, sir. Uh, who would that committee, uh, what are the recommendations you would make of consisting in that committee? Through you, Mr. Mayor, that would be subject to council approval, and uh, so we would come forward with, with some options for council uh, consideration with regards to the selection of that committee. Councillor Humphreys. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a quick question, Mr. Downey. I um, thought about this a lot and uh, wondering if Mr. Downey could consider uh, making Multicultural Festival part of our July 1st festivities in, in terms of during the day at Lambert Wilson Park. And the reason for my thought on this, it's just, it's just out there, um, is what we want to do is absolutely celebrate the multicultural um, everywhere, but also can you imagine combining it and making it a pure, like everyone sort of celebrating Canada Day and all multicultural. I thought at Lambert Wilson Park, I'm just envisioning how, how awesome the attendance would be and what an opportunity for everyone to be exposed to it. Just a thought out there and uh, maybe the, the uh, 24,400 you know, maybe, may or more or less can move a little bit if, if it's done on the same day. Just a thought. I don't know if it's crossed uh, your mind or your team's mind at all, but. Mr. Downey? Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, quite frankly, we have not formulated any thoughts with regards to this. As I said, we're, our idea is to formulate a committee. The committee comes forward with a program development, with some recommendations. Council then endorses that and, and, and tasks staff to execute the event. Thank you. Councilor Gardner. Just, just for clarification on that, Council, through you, could, if I could, to Councillor Humphreys. So you're suggesting that Canada Day became become like everybody who lives in Canada celebrate them Canada Day? Okay, we're kind of straying from yeah. what we're trying to do. I mean, because it, I, I'm kind of thinking this one will go forward. That's just my suspicion. Somehow. And then okay. you can so come back. So even if we put, even, however we do it, the money, we might need yeah. this money. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Is that it? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I'm just, even if, from my understanding, from what our CEO said, even if it falls underneath the line, yeah, we can, we can still talk about it. Yeah. We can still try to make a case for why we want to see that go above the line. So, so yeah, so okay. we'll have an opportunity to discuss. I think this each is and every just one to help you in formulating Perfect. your list. Item three is Parks and Rec as well. New museum position. Any comments or questions on that? With re clarification, just to what it is. Nope. Item four, um, parks, you're an expensive department, Mr. Downey, all these options, holy smokes. Uh, additional exhibition and online museum. Any comments or questions as to respect to what that is? Any clarification? Councillor Kim, Councillor Abel. Yes, through you, uh, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's in the sheet. Through, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, uh, we'd be happy to talk about the the entire program um, if you want at this point, um, uh, or we can talk about it once uh, council asks for it to be above the line. But um, it's basically what we're um, looking for is uh, the curator uh, will come forward, um, uh, and um, uh, we are looking for an online exhibition um, for the museum, and that the museum right now. The majority of the artifacts within the museum, quite frankly, you only show about 5% of those artifacts. 
So not too many people know what's actually in the museum, um, and we would very much like to uh, get those artifacts out onto uh, on, an online um, system so that people can can see the artifacts in the collection that we have within the museum and we start creating an exhibit or an online exhibit with those artifacts. Councillor? Yeah. Councillor Abel. I, just to refresh myself, perhaps other councillors, did we talk about a part-time student for that position? Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, last evening it was, it was uh, uh, General Committee had approved a, a student, but that was mostly to deal with uh, the collection. Uh, we're backlogged with regards to the collection and, and uh, the accessioning and deaccessioning of the collection. That's what the main focus of the student would be. This is in addition then? Correct. Well, and we did approve that yesterday? Correct. Thank well. you. If there's nothing else, we'll move to item five, Parks and Rec, the Town 150. Celebration. Seeing no questions. Item six, Parks and Recreation, um, Pet Cemetery Establishment and Annual Maintenance. I think we've probably all got, got a pretty good handle on what that is. All right, move to item seven. Um, rib Fest. Gate fee reduction. Questions for Mr. Downey. Clarification questions on this. Councillor Kim, uh, Councillor Tom, I apologize. Just so everyone knows, this is the 25,000 uh, that covers the hole in the budget because if we don't charge for wristbands, yeah, okay, correct. Councillor Abel? Uh, just for clarification, if we, the 25,000 is basically for the entertainment for the two, for the two nights. Uh, for head, the big headliners, we've, we've more or less adopted since we had the grant I think four years ago when we first initiated that. Mr. Downey? You, Mr. Mayor, that's correct. Um, and um, so we would, uh, we would like to, as we did last year, um, offer that as a free concert. Um, however, uh, that would take an approval of this in order to have that 25,000 reduction into the RibFest budget. Thank you. So if we didn't approve it, then you would have to hire bands of lesser no, we would initiate a $5 fee for everyone coming into the park okay. for the bands. We'd do wristbands again. Thank you. Item 8, uh, and the CAO in the planning and building is an economic development officer. I'm sorry? Item 9 that was moved over last night. Uh, no, pardon me, that was moved over uh, last week. Facilities Evening Supervisor in IES. No questions on that. Mr. Simonovskis is rooting for that particular one. Uh, item 10 in the Planning and Building Services um, uh, Chamber of Commerce Business Excellence Sponsorship Award. That's for the dinner. Well, comfortable with that, what that is? Um, Item 11 is also the Chamber of Commerce. It's sponsorship for the Women in Business Conference. Item 12 is uh, Chamber of Commerce as well. That was for their uh, Tech Expo sponsorship. Item 13 is uh, the Aurora Sports Hall of Fame Sustainability Funding. We had that presentation last night. Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Mayor Dot. And just for clarification, where has the past funding for the Aurora Sports Hall of Fame come from? What account? Uh, Mr. Downey, can you help us with that, please? Through you, um, uh, with regards to uh, funding, it was, it was from Trillium. It wasn't from uh, any town resources, uh, primarily Trillium funding, as well as um, sponsorship, um, the, um, the inaugural dinner, uh, those were our main uh, sources of revenue. Didn't we give them some funds out of reserves? Through you, uh, we gave mon money from reserves uh, for uh, the move, the building of the wall at the uh, center, and then the capital improvements that were associated with the Hall of Fame. Uh, I know the amounts, I just wasn't sure what accounts it came out of. So I got this from the CAO today. Um, the, there was $7,500 from the 2016 capital budget from the growth and new capital reserve fund. And, um, where's the other one here? Um, 
60 or sorry 58,850 from the um, facilities repair and replacement reserve fund thank you and with a little latitude I'm just going to jump ahead a bit because I, I have a similar question with regards to the support of our ongoing operations uh, through you to mr. Elliott mr. Elliott just to confirm last year when we provided funding for uh, Sport Aurora. It came out of the, the, I believe, the Sport Plan Implementation Fund, which was a, a reserve fund that we had set up through Council Contingency. Mr. Elliott? We had uh, set aside $100,000 for the implementation of Sport Plan, and, uh, and that was funded from the Council Discretionary Reserve Fund, which is the smaller of the two hydro funds wasn't really a reserve fund that we created. We just set aside in the budget $100,000. And then once the uh, details came forward, it was released. It was a conditional approval in the budget. And so once the uh, Mr. Downey's report came forward to council, the 100000 was released and used in accordance with that direction. Um, I guess my only comment for the Sports Hall of Fame as well as the Sport Aurora, I'm going to, I, just, I guess through you to Mr. Natarosny, you know, if, if Council decides not to fund this through the uh, the tax levy. Is there an option again to go back and look at the council contingency uh, as a way to fund the operations in the short term as uh, we continue to work with them on a long term plan? I think you know part of the conversation that we've had in the past uh, with anything really is that you know from a tax levy perspective, if it's an ongoing spend ad infinitum, uh, we often do it from the operating one, but. There are times when we look at certain initiatives, and I'll, I'll use the Emerald Dash Borrower, for example, where we, we draw it from our, our reserve accounts because we see that as a, uh, a fixed period of time, sort of a repair and replacement or growth and new type of capital project. And so I guess, you know, while I understand the process and we're really dealing with the tax levy, um, uh, should council decide not to, or, you know, we're looking at alternative ways to fund everything, is that an option for council? Sir. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, that's uh, certainly an option to uh, address it with one-time funding, and then it, it wouldn't become part of the option package or part of the levy. We, we would find another another fund for it and uh, come back with a, with a plan to fund it. If I may, what would, when would be the appropriate time to discuss that, now or after we rank? You could do it now if you wish. I think it might make more sense to discuss if that's something we'd rather look at now than before we decide to add it to the options list. You can, I mean, this is, if you want to talk about it now, so, I think so, this would be the So what motion would we, we need, if we're doing it separately, we'd need a motion to take this off the options and to have it, staff come back with an appropriate reserve fund or to, do we have to name a reserve fund or? Yeah, um, Mr. Nader, what, what should the wording be, I guess, is my question. I'm sorry? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. If uh, the intent is to take it off of the option list from a levy perspective, then you could just uh, um, defer it and ask staff to come back with a, with a plan to fund it um, separately uh, from a one-time source so that it wouldn't, it wouldn't be included in part of the levy. So that in that case, it would come off the option list tonight. I'll move that motion then for the Sports Hall of Fame. I don't know if you need me to be more specific than that, or if yeah, I think we all understand. The clerk's the got it. Is there a second for that, Councillor Thompson? Second. Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, Councillor Kim, do you want to speak to the, to the amendment, or you had another question? Okay. Uh, Councillor Thompson, then Councillor Humphreys. Councillor Abel. I guess just uh, you know going back to our capital budget process and stuff. So we we consider this similar to where you know we we rank things and we gave uh, certain capital projects a B, where we say you know approved in principle pending a further report. Uh, is is that I guess the, the intent here? Councillor Tom. Sorry, just, I just want to confirm the intent. So like our capital budget process where we, we often look at certain projects and we say we, we give it a B rating, for example, and we say approved in principle pending a, that further report, is that the intent here from your perspective? Councillor Tom? I mean, I don't know if we want to, I guess I made the motion, so we're going to talk to it. I, I, my, if we want to talk about moving it off and Sport Hall of Fame, or sorry, Sport Aurora off and then continue with the levy, or if we want to... Well, no, the, your motion's on the floor right now. My motion is, I think my intent is that 
when I think of, and I had a conversation earlier with some other counselors, you know, the tax levy to me, it's funding year over year. We're talking about a one-time, uh, at least for me, um, for this year, to, because we've had a, a, the Sport Hall of Fame has had a shortfall in uh, Trillium funding, and it's come off of their, their budget, and this would be a way to help them get through their operating costs this year, but then come back and work with them to, um, as we move forward. So, I mean, if that's a B, I'm not sure in terms of what you're talking about. I guess it is. But I would, I would be happy to move forward with it probably as an A, using our criteria from capital for the Sport Hall of Fame, because I said, we, they've lost their trillion funding. We've kind of had this at the 11th hour, and we're kind of up against it here, and we want to make sure that we have a sustainable partner in the Hall of Fame. I mean, I can go into my, more of my rationale. Um, we spent around $66,000 moving the Hall of Fame from Town Hall to the SARC. We've invested a significant amount already, and they do great work, and we all, we all know they do great work, and the, 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 the Hall of Fame dinner is amazing, and everything they do is wonderful. But for me, I think that this, this way we can fund their shortfall for this year and work with them moving forward on how do we close the gap for years 2018 and 2019. We're talking about the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame right now. So, so that was my, that's what, when we talked about this a little bit before the meeting, and that was my rationale for looking at a way to fund this from the capital spending as opposed to the, the tax levy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, I, I mean, I'm happy to go into it a bit more, and I don't know if that answers your question, Councillor Thompson. It does. It, I appreciate that, and, and I am in, in support of what you were saying as well. And I think that, you know, if I go back to the presentation last night, you know, uh, there were suggestions there by uh, Nancy Black from, from the Sports Hall of Fame about, you know, future opportunities to continue to collaborate and, and sort of integrate some of the, the work that's being done. You know, uh, she made a reference to curatorial services, which, of course, you know, I think is something that we should explore and, and, and consider. And so I think, again, um, I'm comfortable with the one-time funding out of the council contingency because, uh, again, uh, if we do look at some long-term sustainable funding, let's say over the next 10 years with them, you can look at some of the services that they're providing, whether there is any of that integration with, you know, what we're doing from a curatorial perspective or, or else, and then work out that plan. And so that, that amount may change from an operational perspective. And so um, I'm, I'm comfortable taking it off of the, the options page and moving it in and funding it through the reserves while we work with them in, in 2017 to look at where some of those uh, synergies could be and, and for council to make a decision about the long-term viability and sustainability about the Aurora, Aurora Sports Hall of Fame. Mr. Nader Rosny. Thank you, Mr. Chair. In, uh, <clears throat> in light of that approach, I have a suggestion that uh, you could just zero out that dollar amount and it would be understood that that would be one-time funding. So it would have no impact on the levy, but you could still leave it on the option list and just have everybody vote on that basis. The, the option, we're going to vote on it, but that's still to fund it from the reserves as opposed to the tax levy. Okay, uh, that's fine. Specifically the council. As opposed to voting on it right now. Okay. Okay, so, uh, the specific funding, Mr. Elliott. Just so we're all council discretionary reserve fund, smaller of two hydro. Okay. And what's the balance on that? Yeah. Fifty-one thousand. <laughs> two and a half mil. Two and a half mil. Okay, Councillor Humphreys, Councillor Abel. Councilor Kim. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And a lot of what I was going to ask and say has been said. Um, absolutely, the work that has been done, uh, as Councilor Tom mentioned, with the Sports Hall of Fame and uh, Sports um, Sport Award, absolutely we have to, I mean, for me, this year, uh, absolutely I was supporting it 100%. And to have it done in this manner, I think it's fantastic because it allows us 12 months to help work with uh, the organizations. And to your point, uh, Councillor Thompson, about um, curatorial services, if all goes well tonight and we have a new position, it'd be uh, fantastic to have that type of requirement from the uh, Sport Hall of Fame uh, work, you know, on staff and uh, really be able to amalgamate some of the work that needs to be done to move both, uh, both uh, work forward. So I'm happy about that. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor. Um, so I'm, I'm just catching up. Councillor Thompson has uh, suggested, uh, uh, do we vote on, on that's where it'll go, the funding? Um, it's a motion on the floor by Councillor Tom. Councillor Tom, you put that on the floor that we will, we will fund this year 
And so then we will be able to put a zero there and we can all put 10 on that one because it's not going to affect, if, if you so are inclined. So that takes a bit of pressure off of our imposed ceiling of 240, somewhere around there to get it in. And that's a good chunk. So, I mean, in my mind, um, uh, the, the Hall of Fame for four years has not cost anything. For us as a town, or if we were to task our staff to do so, who knows how much that would have cost. Uh, it was all done on volunteers, and it was done through grant process, and it's just fantastic what they put together. As we know, our Hall of Fame is uh, one of the very best, and it's through their efforts. And the town has helped out as well, but um, compared to what we would have had to pay, I mean, to me it's like uh, uh, delivering the Cadillac in the driveway and you're asked to assume uh, the insurance. And um, so I think it's just fantastic. Um, I would have been all in favor of putting it into our tax levy. I think eventually we're going to have to work it in, uh, show that we're going to do it, just like we do with other uh, uh, things that we do in this town, whether it's public art or, or shows that we put on in the, in the concerts in the park or um, our museum. This is, this is integral and part of our fabric, is showcasing the legacy of sport. So, I mean, I'm in favor of moving forward. It, it, it guarantees in my mind that it's it's being looked after so um, and with the thought that we are asking staff and council to come up with a sustainable model going down the road so um, that gives us a bit of time so I will support it Councillor Kim Councillor Gardner thank you mr. mayor um, you know when I was looking at the budget when I first saw the Sport Aurora and, and the Sport Hall of Fame ask, you know, I think it was just a few days ago that it came in. You know, it, was, uh, it was a significant, uh, it's like a paradigm shift essentially for me because uh, before I go there, I mean, there's, there's no doubt that, you know, when I, if I were to rank this, Sport Aurora and the Hall of Fame would be a 10. In terms of, do they provide recreation opportunities? Yes. Do they provide uh, uh, and promote health? Yes. Do they promote in our Aurora and identity? Yes. And our community sense? <coughs> yes. And, uh, so there's no doubt they, they, they're a big contributor to our community and uh, they're a great partner. And I would have no problems funding. You know, for the last several years, we've had three cultural partners where we funded uh, their operations. Essentially, they're another department and they're part of our everyday our annual budget. So for this to come a few days ago and for us to make the decision on a couple days notice or a few days notice, it's a lot to ask. I know in a lot of private sectors or any companies, when you have a big ask or a structural change potentially, you know, you go out there and you kind of massage the idea, you know, to, to uh, get people acclimated to the idea and so forth. Like, you know, for, compared to our whole budget, we're not looking at a lot, 150000 but this is the start of, of something that's structurally changing. Um, so, so that's what I was thinking. Um, also, what I was thinking about was that I was hoping that something like this would happen after uh, the cultural partners uh, report and review uh, that's being spearheaded by our CAO uh, to identify who our cultural partners are. Um, in my mind, sport is a culture. Whether that's going to be part of uh, this grouping, I don't know. And in my mind, there's a different structure uh, that I envision, and that would also uh, envision in terms of uh, funding source as well as the distribution and um, the the umbrella structure so at, at the end of march when hopefully this report is concluded uh, there'll be a total different uh, funding mechanism uh, funds you know where it's going to come from and so i was i was hoping that this would have to wait for that um, and so i only preface that because 
the ranking is based on the decision now. Uh, but based on the amendment, um, I'm all for it uh, in terms of uh, I'll, I'm for uh, approving the, uh, the 50,000 or so to uh, get them through 2017 because the report's going to come in mid-March or end of March. Uh, so I just want to provide context in terms of because this will impact the parks and rec positions, uh, which we all ranked, and some of those uh, uh, activities will be impacted by a potentially new structure. And so those are the things I have in mind, so which really bias or impacts how I view uh, this, this funding process and, and who in the activities we're funding. Thanks. Councilor Carter. Councilor Marakas. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm not sure who can answer this question. Um, with respect to our reserves, they're for capital spending. That's a question to somebody. Uh, the council contingency reserve is for but the council whatever council So determines. originally we were talking about reserves that we were. Correct. Yeah, it so. was, I think it's just a misstatement. Okay. With respect to this particular item. With respect, because I, I certainly wouldn't want it to come out of a reserve fund that's meant for Correct. capital. Yep. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Council Marcus. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm not going to go into too depth. I think everyone's pretty much said the same thing. And I think we, we all agree that uh, the Hall of Fame is, uh, is an excellent thing for our town moving forward. Uh, the one thing is um, I will agree with Councillor Abel. I think eventually this is going to become part of the tax levy and it is going to be something on an annual basis. We need to do that because I, I mean, I honestly, I believe that this, this is not just uh, Aurora Hall, uh, Sports Hall of Fame as far as uh, a group. This is the town Hall of Fame for sports. And so therefore we need to put in money on a yearly basis for this. And, and so I, I, that's where I see it going. And so I'll be comfortable doing this for a one-time thing, but I think that next year we have to look at putting this part of the operating and, and, and on the tax levy because that's where it needs to be. Councillor Thompson. Uh, absolutely. I think, uh, I think probably everybody's in agreement with the fact that it will eventually become on the tax levy, whether it will be for 50000 or or a different amount because we're, we're finding um, ways to, you know, I guess share services or, or allocate certain services, I, I think, is, is a fair comment. Um, I guess the question then comes to staff is how do we get to that point? Do we need direction to staff to sit down and, and have those conversations with them about what does the long-term funding look like? You know, I, I kind of think of the Arboretum where we have a 10-year plan with them. Still, granted, they come and they, they, they uh, present at budget every single year and they tell us what they did and what they're going to do and what they're, they're spending the dollars on, but there's kind of for them, you know, a long-term viability plan about what they're doing and where the funding's going to come from. So um, through you to Mr. Natarozny, you know, does that require some sort of special motion to, to do that or can, can ta uh, staff take that direction to have start having those conversations knowing that in a year from now when we're sitting back at this table, we want to understand, you know, the long-term plan for the Sport, Sport Hall of Fame? Mr. Nader Rosny. <laughs> through you, Mr. Chair, uh, <clears throat> I've already been saying that budget 2018 starts on January 1st, so we'd be happy to take that direction and include that in our deliberations. Councilor Perry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'll be voting against this amendment. Um, typically, when we use reserve funds, it's because something comes up that needs to be funded that we don't know about. We're, you know, we know that this is coming and we're saying, well, we don't want the taxpayers to be paying for it. We want to come out of a separate account where it doesn't affect the tax levy. That's not the way, in my opinion, that, that we create good budgets. If we know that something is coming forward and we know in advance, um, and I agree with Councilor Marakis, this is something that to some extent is going to be annualized. There's no reason that we should be putting it into a reserve fund uh, when we have the opportunity now to, to put it in the levy if that's what we choose as a council. Um, ultimately, you know, when I was away at FCM, we, we, we always say exactly the same thing. It all comes out of everybody's pocket, regardless 
of whether it's coming out now or it came out last year and we're using it now. Um, these are reserve funds that I have always presumed we use when we're, when we're in a pinch and something comes through halfway through the term um, that we deem is, is of value. It's not to be used as a, as a crutch or a tool to try and limit the tax increase when we're going into it, you know, head forward. Um, so I'll be voting against it. I, I, I understand where Councillor, where Tom is, is coming from, but I, I personally just disagree with that philosophy. Councillor Abel. Um, I appreciate some of the comments and, and I think maybe uh, as we go down the road, uh, Sport Aurora, perhaps Sport Hall of Fame will also be invited into the Finance Advisory Committee where, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, but you invited the, the Historical Society, the Cultural Center and the Library to, to come in for, to set sort of some guidelines and, and where you were going and, and uh, that way there's advanced sort of notice what's going on. Uh, you're collaborating beforehand. Um, so I'm just, I'm just mentioning that because um, one of the comments was, was just put on our lap, but we, we could know better going in the future by including it into that process of the advisory committee, which is uh, shown um, some great efficiencies going forward. I mean, we're moving a budget uh, we're, I think we're like five months ahead of where we were the first first year in our term. So uh, that speaks volumes about the value of the uh, Finance Advisory Committee. So I've just a suggestion, a comment, and uh, I know, Mr. CIO, you said it starts January 1st, so I know down the road it might be something that I'm, I'm advocating for. I'm, I'm just betting the CAO is not working on January the 1st. <laughs> just a guess. Councillor Gardner. And I absolutely agree with Councillor Peary on con our contingency reserve fund that we have. But my understanding with the council contingency fund was that it was f we could fund special projects. And I, I know I agree with you. But this year, this I mean the lateness of the ask, et cetera, the, the, the need for planning. Um, I think I think I'm okay with it for this one year. Thank you, Councillor Gartner. And before I give the last word to Councillor Tom, because I haven't yacked yet, um, is that I, I, and I appreciate Councillor Perry's point of view. Um, and I, I think that, that part of the, um, part of the uh, responsibility of this is on Council itself uh, in terms of, of refining that particular part of the budget processes. And when, when do we look for third party groups to come and and talk to us about this. And we haven't been, I mean, we are, Council Labor said it, we're a lot better now than, than goodness gracious when we did our first budget in 2000, starting in 2010 and halfway through 2011. Uh, so we're much better at this. Uh, but one of the things that I think we definitely need to do is, is to set some criteria. And the CEO and I talked about that this afternoon is when do we ask these groups to come forward to us and make a presentation as to what they're looking for? Uh, because it, it is, I feel uncomfortable when, quite frankly, when someone comes to the, to the microphone during the deliberations and, and puts forward the request. Um, because I don't feel that I can give it the, the proper attention to make the, and, and Councillor Kim referred, you know, uh, alluded to that too, to, to, to give it the proper attention, to give it the, the uh, consideration that it's due. So, um, and I was going to, uh, Councillor Thompson spoke to it already, but I was going to uh, request that a staff report, uh, that this funding not be contingent on a staff report, that, but that it be tied to a staff report as to how we come forward and work with this more effectively so that everybody is, is far more comfortable with with the uh, position. I do support it, uh, and I agree with Councillor Gartner that the Council Contingency Fund is a location for doing this thing, but eventually we have to decide if this is going to be part of our town levy uh, because it celebrates the town, and that's really the right place for it. Councillor Tom, the last word to you. Thank you, and, and, and this comes out of, if you just look at the Sports Hall of Fame budget that they gave us, the Trillium funding uh, has ended, so, and we kind of got in a situation at the kind of last minute at budget, we're looking at you know, a great organization in the town, a big gap in their funding, and we have to come up with a solution to fund it. My point is with, with the one-term funding for, the, for 2017 is that, you know, look at the line item. 20 grand was spent on artifact collections, displays, and curation. I mean, we might be able to absorb that into our, the operating costs of the running of the SARC, and that significantly reduces the shortfall. 
And so maybe if as we can help partner with in, for 2018 and beyond with the Hall of Fame so that the tax levy increase is much less to the town and it gives the Hall of Fame the breathing room they need to perhaps raise more funds or whatever. So this is just a uh, short-term uh, funding so that we can come up with a long-term relationship moving forward. And I think that that, you know, I'm happy with that and, and I hope Council is as well. Calling the vote. All in favor of Councillor um, Tom's amendment? Contrary. It carries, Madam Clerk. We'll move to, that was option 13. We'll move to 14. Uh, and item 14 is the additional funding for part time recreation and customer service rep. Any, any, <laughs> Mr. Elliott, could you arrange for the bouncer, please? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any any uh, questions on this particular item for Mr. Downey? Clarification questions, Mr. or Councillor Abel, pardon me. Um, Mr. Downey, and I'm reading on your on your page 623 that you are taking on additional tasks. 625. I'm sorry. 625. I'm pretty sure 625 is it? Conversion to uplift special events. This is customer service. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Mayor. Da. I mentioned it uh, last night, and I guess it just the the point being is that uh, I, I know that Parks and Rec has a business division and, and does customer service and the bookings and, and so forth. But at the same time, we also have a, a customer service department at the front of the town hall. And so I just my question really was about if there's any opportunities for some sharing of duties or so forth between the two departments when it comes to customer service. So I, you know, I guess I'll initially direct it to Mr. Downey, but I wouldn't mind if Mrs. Van Leeuwen also uh, adds to that. Mr. Downey, please. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, with regards to uh, sharing of responsibilities, uh, when Access Aurora was uh, initially conceived, uh, there was the, some discussions about opportunities for uh, sharing of information or, or, or staff with regards to um, um, some, some duties. Um, the, um, it, it was, it was uh, decided at the time that the duties that were being asked to be performed at the centres were going to be different than the duties that were going to be asked to be, to be performed at Town Hall. Um, uh, the staff at the center are, are very well versed in programs, program delivery, information with regards to the programs, uh, cost of the programs, um, specialized information primarily regarding Parks and Recreation and Cultural Services Department uh, and answer many questions outside of those regarding, to, regarding the department. Um, Access Aurora has uh, a little larger scope with regards to um, information and, and Tasha can certainly talk about that but um, uh, they do not perform a, a function with regards to um, uh, addressing any inquiries with regards to uh, programs or, uh, or details regarding programs other than to uh, ensure that uh, any inquiries are forwarded to the, uh, to the appropriate people. Um, we have uh, very similar uh, workloads uh, with regards to uh, the, um, the amount of calls and the amount of interaction that we have with the public. In fact, uh, to a great degree, we're, we're somewhat larger with regards to one-on-one -on -one, uh, or, or, or public um, contact that we have, uh, upwards of, uh, of 1,100 per day uh, between the two centers. Um, so um, that's uh, that's fairly significant, and so we have we get uh, we get a lot of inquiries with regards to that. And uh, the other thing is we're open 16 hours a day, so the hours don't necessarily work between ourselves and Access Aurora. Access Aurora being uh, available during the daytime hours, uh, the majority of our traffic, as you can appreciate, is early morning and uh, and uh, evenings and on weekends, uh, and we're open 363 days a year. So some of those logistics don't work either. Does Ms. Van Loon have anything to add? Through you, Mr. Mayor, I think Mr. Downey has covered it other than I can tell you that um, the resources in Access Aurora are also very slim, um, that they are, you know, barely keeping their heads above water with, re with regards to the current volumes that they see on a daily basis. 
Thank you, and I, and I appreciate the answers very much. I think, you know, my thought really was we've been having some conversations uh, this year about, you know, lean process, looking at efficiencies, making sure we're avoiding duplication. And so, you know, optics, it's one of the questions I often get is why do we have two different departments and stuff? So I appreciate some of the clarifications. Any other on this? Okay, that was item 14. We'll move to item 15, which is an uplift on the special events from part-time to full-time. Questions for Mr. Downey on this particular item? Councillor Abel. Um, thank you. Um, and now I've got the correct one. Um, I'm looking at the report, and, and there's additional special event sections that have been downloaded uh, onto your department there in the special events, and that's what I'm reading here. Is that true? I'm, so such events as... Um, you help departments plan and execute their specific events, uh, Xmas lunch, uh, children's Xmas party. Um, I think we have a, a staff barbecue in the summer, those sort of events, um, as well as uh, uh, the new edition of the multicultural event. Are there any other events that if we add this on that we're going to see uh, come forward? Mr. Denner? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the um, uh, the events that we've identified or we have uh, taken responsibility for or have been transferred to us from the communications division as part of the corporate restructuring. Um, and that is the children's Christmas party, the staff Christmas party, um, the community recognition awards, uh, those types of things are, um, uh, are, are certainly some additional responsibilities that, um, that this position will help address. Um, with regards to any additional um, uh, events that take place, um, quite often we do expansion of our events. Um, for instance, uh, as you know, we have movies in the park. Um, this year we have movie, we had movies in the Sark um, because we have to take the ice out of the Sark um, uh, for, the, for the home show. And so before the ice goes back in, we have an opportunity to use that floor. And so we thought this is a great time. Uh, so we had movies in the Sark this year. So that we add to our, to our, to our movies in the park uh, uh, program. So we're always looking at opportunities where we can engage the, uh, engage the, the public uh, or the community um, with some family events and, and do some expansion. And, um, uh, and certainly any additional staff resources are going to assist us in that as well. <clears throat> Councilor? Well, Mr. Downey, I, I know you have the, uh, the cultural master plan and it speaks to uh, expanding uh, festivals and events. Uh, that was more or less what I was speaking to. Um, I, would, I would encourage that we look towards that. Um, the, uh, also, the, uh, I, I found it very valuable going over your figures and, and I must say uh, your, your figure of $68,000, although it was incomplete, more or less was uh, in line with what I was revealing uh, when I started adding up the columns and such, uh, with the exception of uh, advertising, which I pegged to somewhere around the 40,000. Okay, Councillor, back, back, back to the item, please. Uh, the need for an additional person would, would include uh, uh, adding extra events, is what I'm talking to about. Um, the, the two uh, festivals, the two um, signature events, Santa Claus Parade and uh, Haunted Forest, are fantastic events, but you have great collaboration with uh, engagement with, with the community. And uh, they seem to um, be, uh, <clears throat> what's the word, um, very successful. And so I would, uh, I was thinking of asking if you're thinking of expanding events, would you consider uh, engaging community organizations like you do in those events to, uh, to help and to, to minimize the expense? Jen? Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of an event that we don't have uh, some community group involved to some degree. Um, there aren't very many. Um, certainly, Haunted Forest um, is uh, very much supported by the community. Uh, several several uh, uh, community groups are involved uh, in many of the um, um, features, I'll call them, as you walk along, uh, as I walk along the trails within Case Woodlot. Um, quite frankly, our challenge with regards to expansion of that program isn't limited by the community partners because 
there are several community partners that want to uh, participate. It's, it's more tied into how many people you can actually put through that particular venue and, and still have a positive experience. So um, th there's some of those, that's some of those limitations. It's one of the reasons that we were, um, that uh, we, we sometimes move venues is because we're looking for opportunities to expand the program and the venues that we've traditionally had them in weren't, uh, weren't able to handle them anymore. Um, um, I can think of Easter egg hunt. We can't do that without uh, without the guides, and they've been uh, they've been instrumental right from the very beginning. Um, uh, we uh, uh, we can't operate uh, Rib Fest without uh, without our partners, uh, particularly for the beer tent and, and some of the other uh, and and uh, and some of the other volunteer services that are provided. So so we are continuing to look for community partners. If there's a if there's a if there's a community group out there that wants to partner with us. We're more than willing to, to talk to them and find out what kind of role they would like to play uh, in the provision of these, these, uh, um, um, these special events. Um, uh, because the only way of looking for those expansions, uh, instead of asking for more money, is to ensure that we get more community groups involved and get them to help us sponsor those additional uh, elements within the event. Councilor? Thank you. That's just what I wanted to hear. Any other comments on this? We'll move to option 16, which is um, Sport Aurora. Councillor Thompson. Um, I'm going to make a similar comment, uh, and, and actually I'll make a similar amendment uh, to what we did with uh, the Aurora Sports Hall of Fame, that it be funded out of the, the Council Contingency Fund. Uh, I'll move that amendment. And, and my comments are... are <laughs> My comments are similar as I well. I think Councillor Abel had his hand up first, actually. We, we began the, you know, last term we had conversations with regards to the implementation of the sports plan, and we, we entered into an agreement with uh, Sport Aurora to help us uh, achieve many of those objectives that was funded out of the, the Council Discretionary Fund. Um, you know, they're, they're due to come back at the end of uh, March, or staff are, with a report to give us a little bit of a, a report card on how how they've progressed, how they've met some of those objectives, um, and so I certainly look forward to seeing that. Uh, through you to Mr. Downey. Mr. Downey, at, at this point in time, any concerns or, or issues with um, that implementation of the sports plan? Mr. Downey? Through you, Mr. Mayor, no, I'm, I'm very satisfied with the, with the progress. Uh, in fact, I, I got some additional material today with regards to some policies that we we're looking at for uh, for barrier free access and that type of thing. So um, they continue to work on uh, they continue to work on uh, the initiatives that have been identified within the sports plan, and I'm happy with that. Great, and I would have expected nothing less. Um, and so I guess you know, and I respect everybody's opinion on on you know how best to fund these kind of initiatives and, and everybody has a different perspective and, and, and that's fine. I guess one of the things I think about is, you know, on this, in the six years that I've been on council and we've approved budgets, we always get to the end of the year and hopefully this year as well and we have a surplus and that's a tax levy surplus. And we don't give that money back to the residents. We take that money and we stick it into tax rate stabilization fund or the reserves or whatever and, you know, I don't have the figure off the top of my head but probably over the last six years if you add up all those surpluses, it's well over $2 million easily, you know. And so, you know, that's what I think of sometimes when I think about the, these one-time fundings so that, you know, we can continue to work with the operation about what's it going to look like because I don't necessarily want to put a $100,000 uh, line item into the tax levy because then you're going to fund it year after year, right? It's either going to become a tax pressure or tax relief. Uh, but I still think that similar to Sport Hall of Fame, you know, there needs to be those conversations about what's the long-term uh, outlook for these organizations and how do we work with them, no different than anyone else. But I do think about all those surpluses we've taken and we've not given it back to the residents, we've just parked it in the reserves. Tax rate stabilization for those, you know, unknown um, events that may have significant impact to the tax rate, but also sometimes we just dump it into reserves. And that's over and above the What's the number this year, Mr. Elliott, for cash capital? Four and a half million dollars we, we've put into our reserves. So those are over and above funds. So those are some of the other things I think about. So to me, you know, again, there's only, there's, the money only comes from one source. It comes from the residents. And there's the tax levy, and then we take the surplus and we stick it in reserves. And I think it's appropriate every once in a while to use some of those prior surpluses to fund some of these initiatives. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Humphreys, Tom Abel. 
Thank you, Thank you Mr. Mayor, and absolutely support um, what Councilor Thompson just said. Um, and I thought we had already voted on this initially and combined the two, so I'm 100% in favor for the, of this. Councilor Tom. Thank you, Mayor Dodd. Um, I agree with what Th Councilor Thompson said. I certainly agree with the direction, but for my part, um, I'd like to see staff come back with a bit of a report and update on some of the information we were provided with respect to Sport Aurora. Um, and I'll, because obviously we were just given this last night. In fact, I, I only got this chart sent to me at like nine o'clock last night, so I didn't even see it till this morning. But if I recall correctly, and just going back through what we did with, um, with respect to the sport plan initiative from this past April, was that we looked at essentially the balance sheet and said, there, you know, we'll, we'll fund that through uh, this uh, the sport plan initiative uh, to implement the first year because there was a shortfall then of the Sport Aurora budget. I believe that's how it went. If I'm incorrect, someone step in and correct me, but I think that that's how it went. And so, but in this chart that we got from, from, uh, from Sport Aurora, I mean, there isn't any indication as to prior year's budgets. So there's no information on 2016 or 2015. And I, and I don't know this because I asked from, from this information from staff, and I didn't get it today, but um, what that budget, that, that table that we received when we funded the sport plan was. Um, because I seem to recall that there's been some increases in terms of administration fees and for promotion and celebration of sport or marketing or whatever. And so for me, I'd just like to get a little bit more information with respect to some of the costing. I mean, why was, we, we funded the uh, Sport Aurora, and again, obviously a great organization, does a lot of great work within the town, but uh, the year one of the sport plan was 56,000, and now it's, it's, uh, it's 93,000. And so I just wanna know, I, I wanna get a better understanding of some of the numbers associated with this before I'm comfortable moving forward on, on, uh, on funding it. Now, that doesn't mean I'm, I'm not for funding it, I just wanna know what some of those specifics are. So if there's increases, what are the increases and why? And so that we do this with all of our cultural partners, and I think it's prudent that we ask, uh, especially for a sum this big, and for a sum that was asked so late in the process. So, I mean, I'm happy that with the direction we're moving. I just don't know if we can tie a report coming back from staff before we move forward on it. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any appetite for that from other, the rest of council or not, but certainly for me, I think a, a bit more information on this would be nice, considering it is $100,000. So I'm not sure if I need to make a motion on that or if that's something that staff well, can take under advisement. Could I finish my speaker's list? And yeah, on. absolutely, sure. Thank you. Councillor Abel, Councillor Perry. I, I appreciate the comments, um, uh, Councillor Thompson, especially about the surplus and giving back. And certainly on an initiative like uh, what Sport Aurora has given, it's, it's, it's really a nice indication of uh, and appropriate that we give something like this back. I just, again, I, I don't get the impression that I don't, I just read this for the first time, but there's some great articles in Musical World, more than a fiscal education, and it's about investing time and resources in the youngest citizens, the youth, that can reap rewards not only immediately, but decades into the future as well. So this is the kind of investment we're giving back in, in uh, investing in Activate Aurora and some of the great other initiatives that have come out of Sport Aurora. We're, we're making a, an investment in our community with this, so uh, I appreciate that we are, looks like we're gonna go forward and support it this year, and uh, we're gonna wait for a report back um, to, to give us a better understanding of how we might be able to sustain and move forward in the long run in our investing in our community. And um, so uh, I, I will support the amendment and some of the suggestions going forward, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Perry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and for clarity, um, other than the the funds that were requested halfway through 2016, uh, were there any? F I I just can't remember. I, I could have sworn that there were. Um, in what funds did uh, did we allocate in the 2016 budget for Sport Aurora, or for the 2015 budget for Sport Aurora? Do we have those numbers? Do we know how much money we allocated to them in the past? Mr. Downey, do you have that off the top of your head? See, Mr. Mayor, we, we haven't funded Sport Aurora, uh, but we did fund their service contract for the sports plan. And that number 
but other other than what that was the midstream I was I that was, was that was it we have we have provided no other funding other than uh, we have provided office space as, as you are aware um, and um, uh, but other than that no funding uh, has gone directly to support Aurora other than for the service contract and that's in, in years past nothing else that's correct okay I I reiterate my comments um, you know I'm not sure this is going to be a one-year um, initiative. I also think that there might be some some further work um, that we can do with Sport Aurora to help limit limit this in the in the future. Um, but you know, I'm fully in support of the organization. Um, I just I don't like this process, so I'll be voting against it. Thank you, Councillor Perry. Councillor Kim. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think uh, I don't have to repeat, but I'll repeat again that I am a big supporter of Sport Aurora and what they do. Um, but at the same time, I, I am, um, as a couple of other councillors have uh, indicated, I think process is, is so, so important, especially when we're fiduciaries. And the biggest thing that not everyone may support the cultural center or the sport aurora even though uh, they're big big entities here but everyone supports uh, a good tax rate if there's such a thing as that um, and i think you know as indicated earlier you know having just looked at this and having the presentation a couple of days ago and then to fund you know 90 some odd thousand I just I don't feel comfortable, not because I don't trust the organization, because having interacted with them and seeing uh, past activities and materials, I have every confidence. Um, I just would like the process to be uh, uh, followed, and if there isn't a process, that we have a process in place. And I have no problem in, uh, I think, in along the lines of Councillor Tom's uh, probable motion uh, amendment is to set aside these funds uh, but let's have the process come forward let's have staff do a report help you know help us to kind of massage that in our head so we understand what we're getting for the 93,000 um, and you know I understand uh, the the perspective uh, uh, that was given regarding you know we, we put in a lot of uh, we've had surpluses in the past and this is a way of giving something back, but you know, another way of giving something back to everybody is the, is the lower uh, tax levy. Uh, you know, through, just for my FYI, maybe for others as well, uh, through, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, to uh, Mr. Elliott, our tax rate stabilization reserve, we have four and a half million in there, which we haven't utilized uh, in my recent memory. Can you remind me in terms of uh, when can we access that? What's the process for that? Mr. Elliott? Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, Council can access the tax rate stabilization reserve at any time for any purpose. Uh, generally, it would be to insulate the tax rate from uh, one-time shocks or from sudden un, uh, unexpected shock. And so you could phase something in. Um, or to accommodate a, a disaster of okay. some sort. Great, thank you. And the only reason why I bring that up here is because we're talking about um, funding certain things from reserve. Some of the reason is so that uh, uh, you know, we're giving back to the residents. You know, we have four and a half million that uh, one-time shocks. You know, what's our uh, uh, what's our category or, or perspective of a one-time shock? For some of us here, maybe this funding ask of 93,000 or multicultural festival or anything else could be a one-time shock. Um, so those are something that we should think about. Um, I'm for uh, having uh, a process in place, having staff uh, do the report, but you know, putting putting aside these funds from our operations and uh, and, and funding sport award that way. Thank you, Councillor Gartner. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I really don't know what to say because everybody said it. Uh, <laughs> but, Moving on. <laughs> uh, with respect to the surpluses, uh, Mr. Elliott can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we can expect those going far into the future. And uh, with respect to the the stabilization reserve, you know, it is a lot of money, but I'm glad we have it in the bank because you never know what's around the corner. And with respect to process, I, I think that's really where we have to go with this. I mean, we support Sport Aurora, but we need to put a process in place. So for a one-time thing, I'm okay with this, but we need that process. Councilor Marcus. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, you know, as as I said uh, earlier, I think as a one-time thing, I'm, I'm comfortable doing it this time, but I think that we should encourage Sport Aurora, uh, you know, Sport Hall of Fame to come to the Finance Committee, sit down, look for those efficiencies as we do with, with everyone. I mean, we ask our staff, we ask uh, every other third-party group to come in and, and sit down and and go through the budgets that way we can have those numbers at a certain level and be efficient in what we do and what we provide for our residents. Do we, is there value in this? Definitely. It's, there's value for our residents in, in growing within sports for, you know, for the youth, for, for our seniors, for everyone. And so uh, I think we're all in support of it. Um, so I, I have no issues moving forward on a one-time basis of this, but I, I encourage everyone to come to Finance Committee and let's find those efficiencies moving forward and then we can bring it onto the operating side as it should be um, and move forward on, a, on an annual basis. Uh, just before I go back to Councillor Thompson for the second time, um, I support the concept, but uh, as an example, I've got, a, I've got an issue with the price um, or with the, uh, the ask, simply um, the promotion and celebration of sport at close to $60,000. I'd wanna know a whole lot more about that before I, before I fund it. Um, so, um, I support the principle, I'm not, I don't support the complete ask, uh, and I know that Sport Aurora uh, has funding until Mr. Downey March, the end of March, is that correct? That's correct, the end of March. Thank you. Uh, so I, I think Councillor Kim and Councillor Tom were, were looking at, uh, at maybe uh, getting, uh, doing the funding at that point and getting some reports in, in between. Um, but I certainly support the concept, and I, I think the concept, you know, the whole issue of surpluses, very, very worthwhile having the discussion, I think, at the uh, Finance Advisory Committee in terms of, of those policy documents that we've uh, done so successfully so far. I've got Councillor Thompson for the second time, and then Councillor Tom. Thank you, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm respectful of the comments around the table and, and the concerns expressed about wanting some more information, and, and maybe this one is more appropriate for that you know, capital B where, where it is uh, approved in principle pending some further reports. But I guess through you to Mr. Danny. Mr. Danny, if it does get approved tonight, um, do you anticipate uh, Sport Aurora asking for it as a lump sum or, or could it be uh, like a draw? Like, you know, every, every quarter some money's provided to them or how does it typically work? Mr. Danny. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I would recommend we do it uh, similar to the way we do it for the Cultural Centre, um, so that uh, it's not done as a lump sum, but it's done as a quarterly draw. Thank you, Mr. Johnny. And, and I guess, you know, that, that affords Council an opportunity to um, get some of the answers they're looking for, but at the same time providing, um, you know, some, some comfort level to the organization. So, you know, again, if it's, it's improved in, approved in principle uh, with pending those future reports, that money will flow out to them. If the council is satisfied with all the answers, then uh, those installments will continue and, and they'll get their funding for the course of the year. Councillor Tom, Councillor Humphreys. I mean, I don't disagree with that approach, so I don't know if you need an amendment or not. I, I just think for me, I think the concept, as you mentioned, was fine, but I'd like, as I said before, a bit more information and I don't really want to go too much into the details. So if we are going to get a report back, I'd be happy to move forward with it now, but if, if that's not the case, then I would like to ask questions about it. Uh, well, Do I have to make an amendment is what I'm saying for a B or whatever? Okay. I'll ask the clerk, to, uh, the clerk excuse me, to craft some wording. 
Well, I, I think that could be considered a friendly amendment if the mover and the seconder. Okay. It, it's really just yeah. approving approving the, the funding in principle and taking the funding from the council con contingency fund and then pending a further report. Okay. That's fine with me. Councillor Tom. I, I, and so I guess my point would be not to bog down this discussion, but if we have specific questions for staff in terms of what could be included in that report, an email, <coughs> is that the best way? Just so all, if anyone else has questions, they can also. Absolutely. Then, okay. Thank, thank you. you. Councillor Humphreys. Um, thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, uh, you know, well, I appreciate a lot of, of the conversation and understanding it's a one year uh, agreement. From the information that we got, you know, pretty late, but we did get it. it I understand that, you know, mo the most the majority of effort is to deliver year two of the sports plan. And we did outsource that to this group. Um, so for me, I mean, you know, maybe the grant didn't come through as planned, but we outsourced this work to this group and they've done a great job in delivery. So I just feel that I understand that uh, we need more information, but it, it looks like it's just a one year ask to complete that plan, the majority of work. If you look at the, 